You can see how professional I am. Tiffany has to help me get started. <laughs> get out of my way. <laughs> What'd you do to it, Mike? Can't blame me. Watch me. <laughs> <laughs> he has to get fancy with videos and his. There you go. Okay. As it says on the uh, information you have, my presentation will be about uh, professionalism and meeting protocol. Um, but I got to be honest with you, um, I didn't want to do it. Uh, a week or so ago, I sent Alex a, a text and said, look, I got, I got lots of stuff going on. I got family stuff. I got uh, uh, some people that are not doing the best health-wise. Uh, I got, uh, I'm tired, wore down, whatever it is, and uh, I'm sitting there, you know, feeling sorry for myself a little bit about what's happening and kind of at my desk, got my head down and, and really basically trying to avoid doing this. Uh, and uh, at the time, uh, had a purple tie on, and this will make more sense to you that have been around for a while, and that tie kind of rolled out and fell on top of my desk, and I looked down, and it happens to be uh, from Tyrone Thompson. I don't know how many knows Tyrone that have been here for, for many years. I know David and others, and uh, looking down and seeing that tie, and the, and the one thing that comes to mind is, and, and those of you that know Tyrone, is that it just, it just hit me, is that I just saw him cocking his head, looking at me and saying, if you ain't going to do it, who going to do it? And, and that's Tyrone to, to a T. And, and I'm looking at that tie and just thinking to myself, who going to do it if you ain't going to do it? And so beat myself up a little bit and then realized is that I'm supposed to be talking about professionalism and you guys volunteer every day, every week, the amount of time you put in, uh, it's admirable. Uh, it's the, probably the best thing we do as liaisons is have the opportunity to, to work with you. So I need to pick my lazy butt up and put something together because you guys are coming and, and I, I gotta thank Tyrone for that. I got an angel and my angel has purple wings. And so to start off, some of you may have heard this today before, but given Tyrone, uh, was the one that slapped me and got me going, is that to start off, I wanna read this to you. Once upon a time, there were four people. Their names were everybody, somebody, nobody, and anybody. Whenever there was an important job to be done, everybody was sure that somebody would do it. Anybody could have done it, but nobody did it. When nobody did it, everybody got angry because it was everybody's job. Everybody thought that somebody would do it, but nobody realized that nobody would do it. So consequently, everybody blames somebody when nobody did what anybody could have done in the first place. And so that's something that Tyrone and I had been using for 20 years. Uh, and so don't know if, uh, if it was him whispering in my ear, but I do know when I looked down and saw his tie around my neck that I knew he'd be uh, tightening it up if I didn't show up here today and do my job. So I'm here because I respect everything you guys do. And and expect you, and I'll probably say it a few times today, there is an expectation, even though you're volunteers, even though you don't get paid a dime, there is an expectation that you take it seriously, that you work hard at this. You're not only representing yourselves, you're representing Clark County, and we have those expectations. Just like I would think you have expectations that I would be here today and do my job, and hopefully, I'll do it well enough to, to at least uh, get you to pay attention. I gotta apologize to many of you because you've heard this 10, 15 times. So for those of you that, that you gotta go through it, NRS says you gotta listen to me, so uh, enjoy yourselves for, for the next half hour or so. Anyway, as far as professionalism goes, you can see 15, 20 years ago I didn't wear these glasses. I've been told it raises your IQ, so I'm even more professional as we're getting started today. All right, anyway, getting going with this uh, first thing, I had, I had to start with this, is that you guys know that everything that is going on nationally, on TV, and everything else, I gotta be honest with you, DC is a joke. 
it is clearly a joke. Every day you wake up, and these are supposed to be the people that are at the pinnacle and being our role models and everything else, which is why I started off with this video, is that, thank God, at least to me and to my colleagues and everything else, Tip O'Neill once said that all politics are, are at the local level. I think the most important politics are at the local level, and, and we got to get by all this stuff. Uh, you know, these guys, uh, I truly believe some of the stuff that they, they don't even believe what they're saying half the time, but you guys in working with the, with the people at that level is what I think is, is the most important, and, and we got to forget this other garbage. Um, I'm asking you, to, and I need you to participate, is, that, is, is what we're seeing every day on TV, is that professional? Anybody. I mean, we just saw somebody tearing up, whether it was symbolic or whatever it was, but tearing up a speech on national TV behind the president. We know the president tweets out stuff that I would say is not extremely professional. These are the, are the role models that the kids and everybody else are seeing. Um, so I guess somebody's got to answer this. Is professionalism ascribed or is it acquired? I mean, you know, I'm going to point to you, David. You're, you're, you're one of the ones been here a long time. Acquired over a period of time. Okay. And, and why? You've got to learn it. Okay. You know what the principle is. Putting it into practice is something else. And everybody agrees with that? So I guess if there's one thing that we can agree upon is that professionalism is not something that's given to you or it's not a, a status because you're a, a senator or a, a president or anything else. It's something that you get over time and that you work with. So basically, when we look at, at all of our elected officials that are at, at high levels, I guess my message is, is that size doesn't matter. It does not matter that, that you're, you're at the top. That doesn't make you any more pre professional than anyone else. In all of our previous trainings, this section for years and years, we called it the town board chair and vice chair training. All right, how many, how many people have been a chair and a vice chair? Anybody? Okay, so we got a fair amount. How many want to be? <laughs> Are you, really? Wow. All right, and, and I think that this, at least to me, this slide captures it in that for years, and, and it may be on us that perhaps that was part of the messaging that we were giving in a mistake, that, that the chair on the left side, that we were given that perception that, man, the, the chairs, they're, they're important, and it's such a prestigious position, uh, and things that everybody should, should really want to, to get to, when the reality is, it's the chair on the right. It is not easy to be the chair. Uh, it's not easy because of dealing with the, with the public and everything else. Uh, but the thing that I want to really point out for the rest of this presentation is that it's not really the chair's responsibility when we really get into to the meeting protocol and everything else for the whole meeting. There's a lot of stuff the chair's responsible for, but this year, if there's any message I want to give out, it's that it's the entire board's responsibility, and we got to quit putting everything on the chair that the expectation is that they're the ones that are going to make these meetings run well and be great. All right, everybody, anybody play rugby? R raise your hand so everybody can see. Everybody turn around and see who's a rugby player in the back of the room. <laughs> wow, no, that deserves a round of applause. <laughs> nice. Well, we got to talk after, after this, but... No, rugby. I, I played a little bit of rugby in, uh, in college myself, and I wasn't involved with the scrum, but I was close enough to see what was going on. And if one person in the scrum breaks down, falls on a knee, shoulder tilts, whatever it may be, everything collapses. And the thing that, that I want everybody to, to really keep in mind, because I don't want to focus just on the chairs this year, is that the strength of the team is in each individual member, and the strength of each member is the team. And that you guys know that if you have members on your board or on your council that they don't, either they're not familiar with the things that Megan's going to be teaching later, uh, or at least presenting, 
um, or their their behavior is inappropriate during the meeting, um, and they're they're not attending to to what's going on, that that affects the whole board. So it's not just the chair that has to do these things. Um, what's professional? Anybody want to give me what they think professionalism is as far as a definition? I don't want to have to pick on people. Oh, since we're meeting on Monday, then I guess you get to. You get to tell us what professionalism is. Because I'm being professional by being willing to meet with you Monday so you can help me out today. I believe it's doing respect for others. Okay. A anybody else? Anybody else? Idea of professional Darby. There we go. Time and place. I'm not sure what do you mean by time and place. When to say something, when to say something, time and place, okay. Okay, anybody else as far as a definition of professionalism? Okay, well, let me help you out. Professionalism that, that at least I picked up from the dictionary, the conduct, aims, or qualities that characterize or mark a profession or a professional person. Straight out of the dictionary. The next one, skill or behavior that goes beyond what an ordinary person would have or behaving in a more formal or business-like manner that you're pointing towards, uh, Darby, that coming from your dictionary. Uh, and then being uh, somebody that's followed sports my whole life is that uh, one of the uh, more uh, prolific speakers in sports is Yogi Berra. In theory, there is no difference between theory and practice, but in practice there is. Figure that one out. But to me, I think what, what he's saying with that is that there's some flexibility within things, is that it's, it's not always, and I'm not a big book person, obviously, uh, but it's, it's how are things working on the ground? What, what do you see? So if we can agree that professionalism's not something that is given to you, it's not ascribed, and it's not a status just because you are somebody that uh, may have gotten a job or you're in a position, whether you're wearing a uniform, it's a policeman, fireman, or anything else, that that's not what makes you professional. And you can see it every day is that with those professionals is that you may see somebody that's professional or you believe them to be professional, whereas not. And with the same honest views, the most honest men often form different conclusions. Um, clearly, once again, referring back to Washington, D.C., there are people on both sides of the aisle that would say that, that the president is extremely professional is what he's doing, and that those on the other side feeling that, that the Democrats, I use uh, Mr. Schiff for this just because I thought it was a funny picture more than anything, but it, it's getting the point across and to me in that people can disagree. And they can honestly disagree, but that doesn't mean that, that one is necessarily right and the other one is wrong. Okay, as far as professionalism goes, then the things that, that I really wanted to point out with it is that it's simply, it's a series of behaviors. It's not something that anybody can give you. It's those things that David mentioned that you're learning. You learn to be courteous. You learn to be respectful to appeal to, to people, to be tolerant. What's the most important thing that you see from working with the boards of, of any behaviors that you feel is the most important as far as running your meetings? Anybody? I agree, totally. Anybody else that's been a chairman? Okay, and we're gonna, we'll get into to protocol, but to me, and is that, would you feel that professionalism um, supersedes meeting protocol? Just a question to anybody. Yes. Who said yes? Okay, why? Okay, 
Okay. And but. Okay, but do you have rules? Do you have rules for those people? Such as what? What rules do you have that that you mentioned would help individuals that come to your meeting for them to be more professional? your expectations for their behavior at the meeting. Exactly, you have rules. When, when do, you, do you tell people what the rules are? I, I don't know, I've been to some boards and they're pretty clear about what the expectations are. Um, I've worked with probably the majority over the 20 years, which is uh, one of the disclosures that I should probably make is that as we go through this presentation, I certainly don't want I any boards to go, oh, that's us, because Mike works with Spring Valley or, or Mike works with Enterprise. I've worked with Sunrise, with Spring Valley, with Mountain Springs, uh, with Winchester, with Whitney. So any comments that I might make today are based on an observation. They're not based on a particular board or anything I've done over the last year. Most of this is stuff that, that I've observed, but more importantly, when we get later into the presentation, there's actually um, suggestions that we went out to get input from others. Uh, and so, but you do have rules. Um, does everybody read the rules or tell people the rules before the meeting starts? Who said, I know Spring Valley does. I know Enterprise does. Do all of the other town boards and citizens advisory councils at the beginning of the meeting let people know what the expectations are? Yes. Where's is anybody from Red Rock? You guys do. And do does everybody adhere to them? No. No. Okay, go ahead. Well, I appreciate the comments because we'll we'll get into the two minute, the three minute thing, uh, but but those are insightful in regards to how you're going to deal with the people, because you do everything professionally, uh, you let everybody talk equally, you're respectful. Does that mean that everything is gonna gonna work out perfectly for everyone? No. Men of energy of character must have enemies because there are two sides to every question. And taking one with decision and acting on it with effect, those who take the other will of course be hostile in proportion as they feel the effect. You all seen that at your meetings? There's two sides to everything. You guys, uh, I got tremendous respect. I had tremendous respect for the um, the county commissioners and everything that they have to do, but at the town board level and the citizen advisory council level, and those, uh, they're, they're the neighbors of the county commissioners as well, don't get me wrong, but from my experience over the 20 years is that the individuals that you are looking in the eye at your meetings weekend and week out is the guy living two doors down from you. The guy that's on uh, one of the, uh, uh, the chambers with you, the guy that uh, um, is sitting uh, at the baseball little league game, you guys are dealing with people that in mo many respects that you would consider friends and that regardless of what you do, regardless of how well your meeting is run, you're going to have people that at the end of a an item that 
they're not going to be satisfied because it may not go their way. And that's, that's the reality of what it is. I maintain that being professional, running your meetings effectively, are going to limit that, certainly. Um, it's not going to, to make everyone totally happy, but if you're professional in how you go about it, you follow your meeting protocols, those are the things that are going to be the lifesavers. Uh, the other thing is that you mentioned uh, just being nice. Um, last night as I was trying to, to figure out, you know, what are, what are the, some of the things I wanted to add to this is the, uh, the, the thing that, I don't know why it came, but a spoonful of sugar uh, helps the medicine go down. Uh, the nicer that you can be, and, and you can be nice, um, it doesn't have to be argumentative or anything else, at least on your side, that's going to help as people, because they're not going to get their way. How you approach it and your behavior is going to be what, what is different. And I think the consistency is the key. But no matter what you do, how well you run their meetings, are they, or is, is it always going to be good? No. But in doing that, I, 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 I literally, when I say cut and paste, I cut and paste this. That means I got the scissors, I got the tape, and put this together in order to try to get this discussion or this thing going at this point. But um, any of you heard what an ink blot or a Rorschach test is? All right, consider that this. So anybody, tell, tell me what you see off the top of your head. You vet. All right, okay, good. If I was a therapist, I would take good notes on that to say how, how what a deep thinker you are. All right, uh, somebody else that might not be thinking as deeply as Yvette. You're looking at safety issues? Okay, cool. All right, anybody else? What do you see? Chaos. Who said chaos? Okay, all right. I, I would take notes on you on that one as well, but okay. <laughs> Anybody else want to uh, venture? Oh, oh, no, I'm really looking forward to this one. Go ahead. Now, if I was a good therapist, I would ask, which one of those are you? But we're not going there today. But, uh, but we should work together more often because that is exactly what I was looking for. What I see this is, you talk about somebody that's trying to, to reach out and, and do something uh, above and beyond trying to fix it. Are you ready, Yvette? Now, do you got something? Yeah, no, but I like that better. Okay, all right. That's good. You use the word chair? And I will point out, Yvette is with the Spring Valley Town Advisory Board, one of the, uh, one of the brighter town boards uh, there in the area. Um, that's it, Yvette. You and I must go to the same therapist because that's what I was trying to get at, is that to me, that's a chair running a meeting that they're trying to do everything. They're, they're extending themselves. They're trying to fix the light. They've got the, the members that they got to deal with. The chairman have a lot to do, a ton of stuff to do. So it's not just their responsibility to make these meetings go well. And just, just a few of the things, the, the chairs are running the meetings. I've had the, the privilege to work with so many people here, and, and let's face it, there are you that are sitting out in the room today, and I know it, you know it, the liaisons in the back know it, uh, Commissioner Jones knows it, you could do this presentation better than I can, because you've had all those years experience, and I'm so respectful of, of some of the really good chairs that we've had throughout the years that are still doing it, that still want to do it. Tell me this morning you, you want to keep, and, and I have so much respect for that, that that you do. But just think of these things. They're running the meeting. They're telling people the location of the property, maybe a little bit of history because they've been on the board for 15 years. Uh, they're doing the rec sheets. Not all of them, but some chairs are doing the rec sheets while they're running the meeting. Uh, they set up chairs. 
uh, in some areas, they're backing out trucks and cars out of the meeting area before they set up the chairs to have the meeting. That's commitment right there. <laughs> That's commitment. That's what some of these chairs have to do. And, and those of you that have the luxury of meeting in, in a library or in a community center where all that's set up, you need to know that there are places that there's a whole lot of work going on just to, to, to get the, the oil spots maybe mopped up a little bit before people can have their meeting that night. Um, setting up the sound system, uh, dealing with neighbors before the meeting started, uh, fixing the tape recorder, pulling their own tape recorder out of their pocket when my tape recorder doesn't work. Uh, Tiffany just got a new one, so Spring Valley, we should be good coming up here. So we're, that's worth a round of applause. Um, and, uh, and then those of you, and I've seen it, Angie's not here, I would, I would certainly thank her, but there's others I see. Those of you that bring the secretary uh, a cup of coffee before the meeting starts or a drink, those little things, uh, th I notice them. I know the other liaisons notice them, but those are the, the chairs trying to do all these things besides running the meeting is really what my point is, is that we can't expect that our meetings are going are gonna to really run well if it's constantly put on that it's the chair's responsibility. And we've done that for years. That's, that's what this session was always about, TAB chairs and vice chairs. I'm challenging everybody that we got to get beyond that. It's everybody's responsibility. All right. I threw these in because I knew Megan was coming up after me. So be thankful if she has a test. I wanted to throw a couple things that might help you quickly with the test. Town Advisory Board meeting notice requirements, time of the meeting, place and location, list of locations where posted, and the agenda. So if Megan throws a test at you, that might be an easy answer. Um, and then... Uh, Town Advisory Board minimum requirements for the agenda. Clear and complete statement of all meeting topics, list of items on which action may be taken, and a period devoted to comments by the general public. If those are questions that Megan asks, you can thank me for helping you with those answers. All right, as far as uh, meeting protocol, the chairs obviously run the meeting. They're in charge of it, uh, and uh, hopefully that that's something that we can all be accepting us because the the sooner we, we all accept that there is somebody in charge and we got to follow that direction, the easier those meetings are going to do. But all members ensure that both the applicant and residents are treated with equal respect by the board or council members as well as interested parties, regardless of the nature of the item or history with the applicant. All right. We all know that we have people that come before the boards or the councils that may not have completed projects the way they presented them previously four or five years ago uh, that you may have some history with personally, but all of you, everybody, regardless of their position, that you, they've got to be treated the same. They've got to be treated with respect. Um, and the chair's obviously ensuring that the public hearing is conducted in a timely and orderly manner, but... With that, how are we, how are we running the meetings? Are we, are we using Robert's rules? Sir said no, what, what do we use? There you go. Yeah, it's a combination. Does, every, does everybody have a handbook? Everyone does? This year, uh, what I have is 2018 that came out of my file. Is that, Steve, is 2018 the updated one, do you know? Okay. It is? All right. I'm glad uh, Alex won't be the most uh, recent one come next year, but, um, so anyway, if you don't have it, we'll make sure that you have it. Uh, and, yeah. And, and so you'll be going over that uh, later today, okay. And so Blanca will be going over it, but those are the, the way we run. It's, it's very close to Robert's rules, but in, in many ways, I think it's a, a lot easier. Um, and that the who, what, when, and where the Darby was talking about, 
that's, that's the stuff for the chair, but the how, how that meeting goes and evolves, that's all of your responsibility. It's not just the chairs, uh, and that we all have to think about that, and we all have to be willing to reel ourselves in if the chair gives you a look, or the chair asks you to move on, you gotta be, be able to, to take that humbly and make your meetings be as effective as possible. Um, does working to ensure that the public hearing is conducted in a timely, orderly fashion mean that your meeting's gonna be perfect, that it, everything's gonna be cool? No, no, <laughs> it doesn't. And why? This is why. It's a public process. You guys, the thing that I'm asking or that the expectation of Clark County is, is that you at the very least control your behaviors, how you interact with yourselves, how you interact with the public. You can't control the public. We can have some rules and we can have some things that will help with that, but no matter what we do and as timely and as orderly as we try to make it, we all know that that doesn't make sure that, that the meeting's gonna be great because it's a public process. It has the chance to, to get ugly. It has the chance to be difficult. But if you stick to your protocol, I maintain that it's gonna help at least, but it's not gonna make it perfect. And going into it and realizing that I think is half the battle. Um, next thing. The chair ensures that all speakers have equal opportunity to speak. You mentioned earlier is that, um, that there's times when you're gonna give people more. What would be an example of something that, even though you might have the two minute, two minute rule, three minute rule, whatever it is for your board, and I think that Alex uh, brought out one of the points that I'll, I'll, I'll bring up later is that if it's two minutes or three minutes, we're looking for consistency that if somebody that goes to Enterprise, the same expectations at Spring Valley, Sunrise Manor. So what would be a time that you might let somebody go a little bit longer? Okay, and when we're talking about specific minutes and stuff, is that time does not equate to opportunity. You'll hear people that, well, I, I didn't get to speak as long as, as Joe, or uh, the applicant is speaking longer. Well, the realities are the applicant has to speak longer. We don't know what's, what's even needs to be discussed without the applicant describing their project and sometimes having to answer questions and everything else. And it's not always, it's not everybody that makes that argument, but, but you, you as the chair or you as other members of the board to not reinforce that, that, that somebody tries to get you into content is that, well, you're, you're not being fair because you're letting them talk longer. It's the opportunity to speak. It doesn't always have to equate as to who gets to speak a little bit longer or not. You have to use that judgment in order to make it understandable in the meeting flow. Clearly we have time periods when we have those speakers and a lot. Um, how about this, this whole idea of the, the audience needs to make their discussions through the chair? Is, does everybody do that? Nope, five minutes? Okay. Um, I gotta do my stuff through Alex, uh, apparently. Um, 
So six minutes, okay. Well then let me hit with the next the slide. Uh, we want you to walk the walk, but don't talk just to talk. Um, there are, are a number of items that probably don't need a, a whole lot of discussion. Um, any, anything in particular? I tell you, does everybody understand what government patent easements are? Anybody not know? How about that? You know what they are with the government patent easements? Okay. These are things that I don't know if Megan's got it worked into her presentation, but, and she may or may not, and, and, and if she doesn't, these are things that you, that you should know, but my point with that, that they're extensions of time the first time, government patent easements, um, staff comes with a cleanup item. Those are not things that, that really we need to be spending 30 minutes on, and it may be that people just don't understand what they are, so you're gonna have to do your homework to get caught up with that. Um, okay, chair uses judgment to provide, talked about the mom and pops. Uh, the big thing that, that all, all members should avoid commenting, that they know what the neighbors want. You guys are there to listen, take from them, and you're, you're gonna make some type of recommendation, but to imply that you know what the neighbors want because you may or may not live in a particular area doesn't provide that balance, and, and we get complaints about that from applicants. Uh, chair, and I think most of you do it, should announce that applicants, what the next step is. Uh, we need to make sure that the recommendations are clear and conditions are enforceable. Um, I actually have 15 more minutes, but I can, <laughs> so, no? Okay, all right, cutting me off. No. All right, uh, be, then we're gonna have to be smart about this and, and go quickly. Uh, but my idea of smart is that what we give you today is not gonna be enough is that you're gonna to have to study, you're gonna to have to memorize and, and to articulate your position on things. You, you, have to, you have to know what the planning and zoning stuff is. And there are several, several of you that know it well, but I'll guarantee you there's a lot of people that don't. And that you're gonna to have to be able to study it. I would say make yourself chief sheets if you have to. Um, the other things with being smart is that you're able to reconsider that you're, you're not just sticking to that position you had before something begins, and that your interactions with people are tempered. Uh, the chair determines the floor of the meeting, obviously. Uh, you gotta take direction from the chair. Um, all members should think twice before you wanna become the chair. All right, some quick advice, and uh, obviously if you see that I'm, I'm using this type of slide, I've grown up Catholic, and any time a nun would tell me that she had advice, it was clearly criticism. Um, consumer advice, avoid engaging in back and forth with members of the audience, coming from a liaison. Use discretion and patience with unsophisticated mom and pop applicants. That's coming straight from a, a board of county commissioner. Remain attentive, avoid side conversations. Side conversations or laughing during the board of county. That came from, from several applicants. Uh, and, and that's probably one of my biggest pet fees when I, when I see it because, you know, people are investing millions and millions of dollars in things. You got neighbors that may not be happy, but to, to see the whispering or the giggling and laughing, uh, it, it goes to the side of not being balanced. Um, look at details ahead of time. Uh, be prepared, know the rules. Um, and be able to facilitate the compromise coming from a citizen. Avoid accusing or berating sarcastic language with applicants, neighbors, staff, or fellow board council members. Another liaison. We'll have to skip the video. Uh, keep the meeting under control, obviously. Individual members should not dominate discussion, especially the chairs, as an unbalanced uh, discourse leads to the perceptions of things not being fair. Um, this coming clearly from an applicant, and it was mentioned earlier, RE does not mean the land under consideration should be half acre lots and Title 30 allows for lots under 4,000 square feet. I put out the request to people uh, and want to make sure that I include everything that they put in there. Um, another one from a liaison, don't be mean to planning staff. They're simply following Title 30. 
don't give more time and attention to certain special interests to the detriment of others on the agenda. Um, and we know that there are items that are near and dear to your heart, but it's important that everybody that comes up is treated the same, talking about the standards that Alex mentioned earlier of all the boards that way. Anybody of you guys seen, uh, seen this guy at uh, meetings? Uh, beware the user. Any, you said yes, who is this guy? <laughs> All right, and, and I've seen him at a lot of board meetings, and to me what the user is, he's the unimpacted, serial, egalitarian resistor. He's that guy that that first time he comes on an issue and that you know he knows a little bit about Title 30, a little bit about land use, and he's opposed to something, and you're like, wow, it, he's got it. The, you know, and you're listening, you're ten and then he comes two meetings later, and he's opposed to a, a church or a school that's six miles away from his house, but once again, he stands up, and he's opposed to it, and he might sound like he, he knows all the ins and outs, but it's six miles away. And then the next meeting, there's another school, church, uh, development, whatever it may be, and he's there again, and he's taking his two minutes, his three minutes. Over time, you know that these guys are using your meetings to fulfill their personal agendas, and, and you gotta watch for that. It, it could eat up a meeting. It, can, it could get the crowd inflamed. Some more consumer advice, make sure everyone understands comments should be addressed to the board or the council to minimize back and forth arguments. All right, if large numbers of neighbors are getting repetitive when speaking to an item, a polite show of hands may be effective, and I know I've seen all of you do that. Show up on time, be prepared, and treat applicants the same at the end of meetings as at the beginnings. Uh, support the chair and meeting protocol despite personal or professional disagreement during all the meetings. Um, all members represent Clark County and should be professional during the meeting. That's straight from a county commissioner. Um, the county commissioners, believe it or not, get calls from neighbors when they're upset about how they've been treated or how they perceive a meeting has been, been run. Um, get this. The citizens of the city of Detroit can sue this body and have us help pay it back because they may feel we didn't do our due diligence also. They can sue you. I vote no. Excuse me, Madam um, Councilman Watson. I'm tired of you inter interrupting me. I'm you sorry. interrupted me it? on bamboos or then you interrupt me now. Everybody knows how you stood uh -huh. and you don't have to keep interrupting me because I'm not disrespectful to you like right. that. Colleagues, right. colleagues, President, so Pro stop. President Pro Tem does have Could a you floor. answer my question, please? Some interruptions, please. Yes, I can. You're doing your due diligence due diligence presently in my opinion. We all know that murder is against the law. Yeah, no, this is based on well, I did say several, based upon your I'll experience, I'll do respect, right? President Pro Tem, I have no. a floor. I just wanted to say, I said well, based you upon just, his experience. Well, you just jumped on another council member about interrupting, sure and now did. you're doing it to me. You attacked me, and I didn't oh. attack, did not you. attack you. I have the floor. We know you do, but I said based upon his oh, years. Of I have the, the floor, day, President the Pro Tem, I don't want to hear you anymore. And, and you don't have to hear me. We don't have to hear you. Then be quiet, no, because I'm speaking, and I'm asking a question. You do that at home, not here. And not your father, but I am the president, and right now I have the floor. Because I'm tired of that. Everybody Be respectful. Knows. Me, you may not do that at home, but you're gonna do it and up in here. Stop interrupting. You grow up. <laughs> Control your house, and you know how to treat Third other women minutes, better. You're the last one to talk. I'm the that. first one to Council talk. Member. You, Shrek. Shrek. You're out of Shrek. order. The first one to talk. Don't you're disrespect out of order. me. Order of if the you, day. I will call this to adjourn if you and don't. Do it, silent. baby. Adjourn. Do it. Move to adjourn. Do it. We're gonna take a brief recess. Do it. It's Cause y'all not gonna disrespect me up here. No, you the one that just interrupted extreme, me. No, I did not. Yes, you did. You tried to say I said. Did I say uh, based upon uh, your years turn, of service? Turn. Woo, Lord. All right. Uh, it's unfortunate. It's a, she's a little disrespectful to me as well. Um, but that was a major city council. That was the Detroit City Council. That wasn't. Uh, just a mom and pop um, small group and you can see even at that level that type of discourse with each other how it would ruin a meeting I'm challenging all of you not not just challenge you but letting you know the expectations that Clark County has for you is that you're respectful to the people that come to you that you're respectful to each other 
it's going to make the meetings run better. Um, and I know um, Alex keeps looking at his watch. I, I tried to cram way too much stuff. I got, I got a half an hour more stuff, and, and I apologize that, uh, that I wasn't able to get to it and, and didn't know that my time was running out. Uh, but before I, I do it, I got one minute, and, and this is important because uh, I, I think it, it really, to me at least, emphasize um, how much stuff you guys really got to keep track of. And clearly you know that uh, I'm not the, uh, the most technical uh, person here. So when I was trying to prepare this, um, this presentation, I text Tiffany. And uh, so I, I want to read the response that I got uh, in regards to the text. So I, from me to Tiffany, when you get a moment, I would greatly appreciate some help with my presentation. Megan is unavailable. <laughs> Tiffany texting back to me, I can't help with your blank presentation right now. <laughs> Those of you that know Tiffany, please feel free to help others at your table to fill in the blanks that might have been used. <laughs> Tiffany goes on, I would have hoped you learned how to use a blank computer beyond email after 20 years. All right, okay. I am at the RTC now, but have a meeting at LVCVA at 4 p.m. CMART is at 11 a.m., but the CCFD has a ceremony in chambers prior to that. Have briefings with the commissioner later today where I'm sure the LUP and concurrent NZCs will be addressed. Most important to him will undoubtedly be the impact on RNPs, but changes to the RCT and PFNA will also be stressed. RPM is scheduled to discuss RNPP leases with the BLM, but I know EAC, SVAC, and SAC are growing more concerned with potential changes to NRS as a result of the LCB. I look forward to the TAB and CAC training Saturday as they are my favorite people in the world. Well, except for that Dave Chet, well, let's go to the next one. The DOA left a message yesterday wanting to meet about the CMA as there are rumors UNLV or CSN is interested in a satellite campus within the AE-75 zone. I am sure it won't be too long until CCSD wants to build the next CVS despite concerns by the DA and recent recommendations by the PC. I can meet you after the MME meeting as long as the FDA and CDC don't talk too long about CBD. Whatever happened to regular THC? I have to find something in NAC to address the concerns of ADOT in regard to concerns with the I-15, 215, and NDOT. STRs are on next week's agenda along with PRO, DHHS, FHA, GLVAR. Correspondents from DTAC, NWAC, SCAC, and SEAC have all indicated that funding for LIHTF and ESD should be considered by the CDAC. Recommendations for the OAG will also be made. I am still in support of the SBI, even though it is TDY. My response back to uh, Tiffany, TIFF, TMI. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't use that to be acrimonious, but I wanted to use it, the acronyms, just to show you how much stuff you guys got to deal with. There is a lot. There is. R1, RD, RU, all this stuff that Megan's gonna, gonna try to, to get, but it's not enough. The, the, the one hour training, or the, oh, I'm sorry, Alex, the uh, one hour and 33 minute training uh, is too long, but the point is is that you, you gotta study this stuff. It's not enough, uh, and so my thing is listen to Megan today, study it, um, because other than, other than that, I'm gonna have to have Tiffany start sending you texts. All right, thanks. OMG. <laughs> Mike, that was great. Thank you very much for, uh, for your segment. Oops, I don't want her cutting me off, too. Okay, 